Yeah, what's up, YouTube Gen X? I'm all for not playing the blame game and just getting shit done. I truly am. You know, it's almost like playing basketball and you're trying to win. So you don't care if you have to help your man. You know, you have to help any of your teammates guard their player, right? So you're playing that whole help defense and you're still responsible for guarding your own man. You know, the whole premise for help defense is that you can help somebody else with their defender, but at the same time, you can still make sure that the guy that you're supposed to guard is accounted for, right? So you may not need the help. You're good. You know, you're guiding your man all by yourself. You don't need any help straight man to man, but your buddy can't, you know, so you have to help him. He may not need to help you, right? Um, but you're still going to help him anyways. I'm all for that, right? You know, I'm, I'm definitely all for that, but here's my problem, though. Um, when it comes to the different segments of the black community, right, obviously you can break down black men into different categories. You know, Willie Pete touched on that. You can break down black women into different categories, and that's pretty much what, you know, has been done for how long now? Um, <clears throat> you can see who needs to do what, and what they need to do should be based off of um, what they did wrong, Right, so if you broke something, obviously you need to fix it. And also, you need to do a little bit extra. It's like when you go out to eat with a group of people, you pay for um, what you ate, including the tax, but then you throw a little bit more in for gratuity, right? And sometimes you put like a little bit even more in just to make sure it goes over smoothly. You know how it is. You know, you got something to eat. It was like $10, so with tax, it's like $13. Um, gratuity is like let's say two dollars but then you just like man here take 18 or you know you put in a 20 let me get two dollars back just so it's all smooth right you get all that but primarily what you have to do you know your cost is primarily based off of what you got and I feel like that's how it needs to be right um, it's not so much about other people doing more than other people because obviously Certain groups within the black community are in a position to do more work than others. But for me, it has to be proportional at least. And I don't see that. It's like the person who got a meal and the shit is like $18. They're only putting in $17. You know, it's like, yo, man, you know, you're way short. And the person whose meal is like 15 and they put in 20 and they're like, oh, you need to put up way more money. It's kind of like, okay, I'm quite frankly, I'm already putting too much in or, or your shit's like 15 and you put in like 25 and they're like everybody still needs to put in two more dollars I'm like I'm not putting in anything I already put 25 in there right and my shit wasn't even that much um you know that's why sometimes I'm like man let me order my food at the bar and just have them deliver it um you know to the table so that you don't have to worry about sp splitting up that big ass check um you know that's how I feel right now so you have all the different subcategories of the black community all sitting down at this table and you're waiting for your printout. You know, so you have your young progressive black men, they're like, okay, let's see what I'm going to have to do. And you're like, okay, I know that, you know, they're going to give me like four things to do, but in order to help out, they're going to give me like three more, right, which is fair. Because quite frankly, I haven't really done too much bullshit, you know, I haven't been that destructive to the black community, right? But you're sitting back and, you know, young progressive black men, they get their little to-do list and there's like 20 items on there. And it's like, what the fuck is all this? Right? And because it's so big, then you start to do the whole blame game. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on here? You know, I was cool before. I wasn't trying to trip. I know that I can put more money in so it's not a big deal. But I'm getting my part of the bill and it's way over. Even after I'm helping on other people... My bill is way too large right now, right? It's way too large. And that's where the whole, okay, let's take a look at who did what and who's the blame. Because the way I look at it, when it all comes down to who's responsible for um, the downfall of the black community and who's responsible for fixing it, it doesn't make sense right now. You know, the people who are responsible don't necessarily... Uh, get any responsibility put on them and the people who are least responsible have the most to do 
your younger progressive black men are the least responsible, considering the fact that, you know, we're isolated because, unfortunately, you have a strong portion that um, did grow up in a two-parent household in the burbs, right? You know, whether we like it or not, they are a product of that, right? And considering that when it comes to the women, they were thrown out. You know, they, were, they weren't cool, they were corny, they were lame, they didn't have that level of swag, right? So it's just like, how were we involved? To what degree? You know, were we, you know, were we killing other black men? Were we selling drugs? You know, what were we doing? Were we robbing people? You know, were we mugging people? No. Right? You know, when it comes to uh, 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 the women, I mean, we were thrown out. So whether or not, you know, I don't value your beauty because I'm conditioned, it doesn't matter because you weren't checking for me. So how am I responsible for your low self-esteem or, you know, the fact that you have to over-appraise yourself? Right? Obviously, I didn't get you pregnant. Right, because you can easily go to the courts and have them garnish my paycheck. You know, I laugh at the whole idea of black men being there. It's like the women who complain, um, the women who complain about a father not being there, right, um, but not in terms of him not being there financially. Those are typically women that I, you know, I can at least fuck with because it's like, okay, at least you chose the man that was, you know, responsible enough to know that he has to take care of his child financially. Right, but you know you have black women who can't even get a dime, or they may not even know where the father is. I'm like, yo, you just made a poor choice, right? You know, you made a poor choice, and so you have women making poor choices. So it's like, to the degree where they can't even get a single penny from you know the father. So you know it's not your younger on point black men doing that, right? You know, so you can't blame us for that. You know, obviously we don't control the media or whatnot. Um, we're not coming through and saying that. Uh, we like ghetto black women, but now we're switching it up, you know, going back to this whole idea of, you know, we like our chicks like Keisha Cole, but then when it's time to get married, <clears throat> we switch up, and now we say, you know, we want our women to act like, you know, some white chick or some Asian chick, which is bullshit. That's what the women do. You know, the women come through and say, we like that sort of bad boy, then switch it up. But we don't do all that. So when it comes to black women, I, I, I really don't see where their complaints come into play with your younger progressive black men, right? You know, like I said, when it comes to even your inner city black dudes, like, what can you say? You know, we're not even around each other like that, right? You know, well, like, what are you blaming me for, right? You know, it's not my fault you may not have direction or your father lets you down. I'm not your father, right? And then when you talk about the older generation, you know, that's even more annoying because they're coming through as if they were writing their shit like the Cosby show, but, you know, black men went rogue. You know, all your Ray Rays and Pookies who, they, you know, they're not productive, you know, they're not being fathers to their kids or they're not trying. Well, they come from fathers that did the same thing. That's why I laugh when you have your Steve Harveys and your Dysons that want to come through and talk about what black men aren't doing. And it's like, whoa, quite frankly, that's your generation. Those are your brothers, your cousins, the dudes that you were running the street with. These are those kids. Right? So they're a reflection of your failure. You're not the civil rights generation. You know, going back to that whole idea of your older black people trying to run to this whole idea that they were the civil rights generation. Like, no, you weren't. You were kids. Some of you weren't even born. Right? You know, that generation were the people that were born in, like, the, the 1920s and 30s and the 1910s. Right? You know, you were a teenager in the 70s. You know, you were a teenager in that era. So how the fuck, you know where you part of the civil rights movement. You know, you didn't march with anybody like that, right? You know, when the crack came through and whatnot, like, y'all were there. That was y'all. You know, and they're throwing out blames like, you know, we did some shit. I'm like, yo, sorry, we didn't. So when it comes down to it, when it comes down to what younger progressive black men have actually done, it's not that big, right? You know, don't give me arrogancy, right? I'm not even going to get into that. Um, you know, because the women, the, the, the dumb part about uh, the whole argument about, well, you're, you're, you're younger, progressive, what to do black men are arrogant. I laugh at that because those men tend to, you know, get to that level if they do get there. You know, the 26, 27 or whatnot. And you have the women making that claim and it's like, okay, but you're comparing me at 27 to you at 27 which you can't do 
You know, you can't compare men and women using age. You have to use what phase of life they're in. So if you're going to compare the 27-year-old, you know, progressive black male for being arrogant, as being arrogant, um, to black women, compare him to the 22-year-old or 21-year-old. And you will see that there's no difference between who's more arrogant. Right? You know, you got black women who will have a party because they made it to 21 and they don't have a child and they have a job and they can pay for their bill and they can pay for their rent, right? Um, so all of a sudden, they're the hottest shit walking. So to me, the, the whole idea of, you know, your progressive black men being arrogant, I laugh at that because that's bullshit. Um, when it comes to, I guess, black men not owning or running their own companies and communities, I'll, you know, I'll... I'll agree with that one but even with that once again we're not the first wave <clears throat> of black men to go to college we're not right you know you can't blame your younger progressive black men for not taking advantage of the technology boom right you know we weren't you know adults you know when did the, the internet and all that shit blow up what you know uh, mid 90s or whatnot you know we were still you know we haven't even hit puberty yet that's the, the older generation that missed that bus Right? So what can you say? You know, you fault enough for that shit, but hey, it is what it is. Right? You know, how come we don't have the black version of Google? Well, you can't blame your younger progressive black men for that shit. Well, because, you know, we weren't in that capacity to do so. Right? Um, not to say that we shouldn't be trying, but some shit should have already been done. You know, I know Willie Pete's touched on it. I've touched on it. Where... I've had conversations with my father. I've had conversations with other older black men, um, including my uncles, and they'll all say that, yeah, if they could do it all over again, you know, they should have came together and did some shit, or even on their own or collectively. Because, you know, they'll talk to us, you know, we'll let them know about how tough it is out here to find a job, the job market, you know, this, that, and the third. And <clears throat> for a lot of them, it's a painful conversation because they know that they could have done so much more. You know, they're looking at, you know, the Armenians and the Asians and how their kids know that they have a job and that they're going to take over the family business and, you know, they don't have all that. You know, you got, you know, our parents and uncles, they're sitting in nice houses, right, you know, big cars, but they can't secure a job for their son or daughter, right, especially for the son, knowing that, you know, they're still black men, right? Um... So for me, it's like, okay, I can't take <clears throat> too much of the L on that one because, once again, we're not the first wave to come through and go to college and get into professional America, right? You know, people want to act as if we're that first generation post-civil rights where, you know, legally we can now, you know, go to certain schools now. You know, like, come on now, like, from the time the civil rights period ended and, you know, your younger black men, in, term, in terms of... That, that sort of younger black male population who started going to school, let's say, late 90s, right? You know, there's like a, a 40, 50-year gap where you have black people who could have been going to college and running their own businesses and corporations where we could have been get, you know, we can get hired, you know? So I know that was kind of like a rant, but if you really break it down, what did we do wrong to the point where our bill or our to-do list is that big, right? I understand that we have a part to play. I understand that we have to do a little bit more because of that whole help defense mentality and, you know, helping the next man even though you may not need help yourself, you know, that whole collective strength. I get all that. But it's too much. And, you know, people act like it's mandatory. It's one thing for somebody to say, listen, I know I'm giving you a lot to do right now, but quite frankly, I have no one else. And, you know, it is what it is. I can respect all that. You know, we've all had that happen before where <clears throat> you're at work, somebody's gone, and all of a sudden, you know, you have more to do and your boss understands that. And it's like, listen, I know that, you know, you have a lot to do. You know, I'm going to pay you a little bit extra. Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, can you please help out? That, that's one thing. But to act as if it's mandatory that you go above and beyond and cover up for somebody, or, or help somebody else, right, um, you know, to me it's almost laughable. I'm laughing. You know, it's like when somebody is so off, you start laughing, 
right? It, it, that's how I feel. You know, you got your younger progressive black men sitting back, and we're waiting for our list of what we need to do. And it's like, yeah, you know, we're probably going to have anywhere from, you know, seven to ten things we have to do. We get it, and it's like 50, and we start laughing. You know, hysterically. And it's like, <laughs> y'all out of your damn mind if you think that this is going to pop off. And that's when we start to do the whole, well, let's see who needs to be blamed. Let's bust it out. Let's get the calculator. You know, let's see who got what. Oh, you got the lobster? I only got a burger. Or that dude only got a cake. You know what I mean? So, I mean, what's going on right now? You know, I'm trying to help out. Don't get me wrong, but let's keep it real. My shit was only five bucks. I'll put in maybe 12. But don't tell me no 25. You know, everybody needs to put in 25. But like, that's not going to happen that way. Right? So that's my vid. Y'all take it easy. God bless.